Hi, everybody. Welcome to Bo Deedle's One Tough Podcast. I had a couple of guests scheduled this week, but I dumped them off. I think there's enough of news in, going on right now that's so important to all the listeners. And remember, tell your friends about my podcast. This is the only place where I could tell it like it is and tell the truth, and I don't have to worry about what I say. You know, the big thing that comes up to mind right now is this Hurricane Helene. We all saw what happened. First, it was supposed to be a small hurricane. This is turning out to be the second most devastating hurricane uh, that has been on record. When that hurricane hit that panhandle of Florida, it, it people don't realize they did damage all the way up the East Coast, Tampa, Sarasota, where my Margo comes from, the whole area was devastated with three feet of water, really, really bad. And then it goes up. Now what's happened is North Carolina, Asheville, one of the most beautiful places in the Blue Ridge Mountains there, Asheville, North Carolina, devastated. People there on their roofs, they're talking about 20 trillion gallons of water, 20 trillion gallons of water off these rivers. And where is the help for these people? We have President Biden. I think he was seen on the beach. Then you got Kamala Harris, the vice president. She's campaigning. Where is the help for these people? You had people there who are dying. They have bodies that are floating around. Where is the National Guard? Why the hell didn't we have the National Guard mobilized from all the states around North Carolina to save some people? I'm sure there were people there to be saved. Food, water, Tense. Why the hell haven't we helped these people? This is the United States of America. But if there was a bunch of immigrants floating around or something like that, I'm sure we would be helping them. These people are Americans in North Carolina. And I am really, really angry about what has gone on with this hurricane. And to this date, there's nothing that I've seen any kind of help for these people. Food, water, tents. Why didn't we see National Guard helicopters taking these people off the roofs? Why? Because you know what? People don't care about the Americans. But again, if they were illegals, we would be helping them. And I'm really, really angry. This is the most devastating hurricane I've seen. You're talking about Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, and Virginia. These people need help. No one cares. On top of that, in uh, in Washington County over there, where the hurricane was over there in Tennessee, we have uh, at least three of illegal migrants, which were looting the damn houses now. Man, this whole world is upside down. We care more about the immigrants than anything. And I'm going to keep on going. I watched that, uh, I watched that debate last night with uh, J.D. Vance and, and Governor Tim Walz. I'm going to be very honest with you. I thought it was a bad choice when J.D. Vance was picked for vice president. But after watching last night, I really believe that this is a very extraordinary man. He's very intelligent. His demeanor was wonderful. He didn't get shot up. He didn't make faces. He knew all the issues. And the way he danced around with the abortion issue, wow. That's all I keep saying is, wow, we really have a really good guy. And today, if he was running for president today, I'd vote for J.D. Vance. He's a human being. What I heard about him, all the negatives, last night I saw a man that is a caring, beautiful family man that cares about all Americans. And I believe he would be a, he's going to be a great vice president and he'll be able to bring the Democrats and Republicans together on a lot of issues because they were not that far apart on a lot of the issues. And again, the only thing is a lot of people say to me, well, when I ask him about the election, Trump keeps saying the election was stolen, was stolen. Well, what did you expect him to say that he didn't agree with Trump? He's a loyal guy. And when you have a loyal guy, he stands by the president. And that's what you saw last night. And he shouldn't be condemned for being loyal. Loyalty to me is a very important thing. Now, our other big issue. Oh, my God. What's been happening with Hezbollah and the conflict over there with Israel? Well, yesterday, they showed their rearing face. Iran 200 ballistic missiles went at Israel. 
Thank God for the United States of America with our support for Israel and the Israel, oh, that Iron Dome, they were able to deter a lot of those missiles. And thank God nobody was killed. And I'm going to tell you something. I am so proud of Israel right now. They, they, they have people over there that are fighting machines. And what they did with this guy with the head of uh, uh, Hezbollah, when he went in there with this guy, Nazarala, whatever the hell his name is, when they hit that place, he was underground, 60 feet underground. They hit him with, I think, 80 tons of munitions. They put a hole in there. It looked like they went to China with that hole, and they bombed the living crap out of him, and they killed this son of a bitch. And I'm so happy they did that because he's killed so many people. You know who I feel bad for? I feel bad for the Lebanese people that have to have this scumbag around them. Good, he's gone. And also the same thing with uh, with the with the south with the southern part over there with the poor Palestinians. I feel sorry for them too. I feel sorry for innocent people that being taken out by these pieces of garbage over there. And now we got the Houdinis, the Houdis. They're starting to launch missiles. And these people, the people that all they want to do is live in peace, are now being controlled by Hezbollah, Hamas, these pieces of garbage. And why? I repeat it. Why does every head of Hamas that are still living, why are they all billionaires? They're living in Qatar. We should go after Qatar and, 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 and file against them. If Qatar wants to be around them, we should stop any kind of uh, relations with, with Qatar if they want to protect these people. Now we got the Houdinis there, the Houdis, whatever you call them, and they want to get, they want to start launching missiles. Israel's going after them next, and they're going to start, they're going to wipe them out too. Now now we're starting to really, really get our feet on the ground here. You know what? We I, I just found out yesterday. I didn't realize. I looked in a paper today in the post, and I didn't realize ahead of the missile attacks by Iran onto Israel, there were seven Israelis murdered by these two terrorists. They came by train and they were at the station there and they stabbed and they shot people. And it's just unbelievable what's going on. And my new hero, another hero of mine, is the president of Israel. And Netanyahu, man, you got New York in you. You were in Brooklyn. You are New York. And you are as much an American as you as Israeli. You, God bless you and may God bless your life and make sure that nothing happens to you. And now we got to go to our New York City that I love and we have no idea who the mayor is, what's going on. Let's do a crime update. Now, you know what? I got numbers for your statistics and these statistics are the numbers at the police department. And I know all about how they fudge up. They take a robbery, they make it into a grand larceny. They take a grand larceny and make it into a harassment. They take an assault, a felony assault, and they make it into a, a simple assault. This is the way the game is played. Bring the statistics down. There's no perception. Right now in New York City, people are afraid. I'm afraid for people walking around. I'm afraid for my children and my grandchildren. It ain't perception, especially with this uh, 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 onslaught of these illegal criminal migrants, not all migrants, the criminal element that are riding around all over this city, robbing people, half the Crimes going on in New York City, Mr. Mayor, are not being reported. Because you know why? People feel as though they're not going to get any response. And then with this ridiculous bail reform and the morons in the state, uh, in the state Senate, the state uh, assembly who love this bail reform, that means every time a criminal commits a crime, they're right out the door. And then we go to the city council. I always said they look like the cast of Star Wars. Remember the barroom? Do, 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 do. That's the city council. These idiots, all they do, now they just push through another one. Oh, well, let's push it through. Where you have commercial buildings, now you can make them into SROs. This will be migrant New York City. You'll have more people living in small rooms in New York City than ever before. And I want a little bit of an investigation going on with all these migrants, all these SROs. Where the hell are we going with this? Paying $500 a night for this. You know, we're really down on this thing. We 
have something going on with this inflation of migrants. I think we're up to about 10 or $12 billion of money spent on security, on food, on housing, and it's going on and on. And you don't want to know something? We could just look as afar. Here's one example of our bail reform. Idiots in the state Senate and Assembly. Here we go. Lamel Barton, 44-year-old man, known to be a gangbanger, was charged with attempting to rape a woman on a Manhattan subway. He had five open warrants, five open warrants on him at the time of his arrest. He was previously given just 15 days in the jail system for two public sex crimes. He has 51 priors, mostly for public lewdness, resisting arrest, possession, drug possession. He was also remanded last year, getting caught twice. Twice masturbate in front of women. Oh, we let him out. And then you get these silly crime statistics. Oh, from uh, from the last two weeks, only two murders, only 34 rapes, only 301 robberies, only 522 assaults, only two, 238 uh, burglaries, on and on and on. All I know is one thing. You have all 119 other sex crimes, shooting victims, 21, shooting incidents, 15, hate crimes, 7. The fact of the matter is, all these statistics, you can wipe your ass with them. Because, like I said, there is so much more going on, and nobody's reporting them. And the poor cops out there, oh, oh I saw them during this bullcrap uh, UN meeting. Get the hell out of New York City, UN. We don't need you here causing traffic. I couldn't get to my house for an hour. They shut everything down. Why are you coming to this city? We don't want you in our city. You should go out west. Go to Denver, Colorado or something. Get the hell out of this city, UN. And then they go around. They look for all the hookers. Oh, there's a hooker week. All the hookers flying from all over the world for New York City during the UN session. All the rest Restaurants. Who's paying for this? Who's paying for all this security, for all the police? Hundreds of cops in uniform lined up for these morons. And those cops should be protecting the people. They shouldn't be protecting these people that don't like us. Oh, I'm just... And then you got that Venezuelan gang, Trendu Gaga. They're all over the place. And even my friend there, Ray Kelly, one of the finest commissioners, understated that the FBI should team up with the New York City Police Department and go against these gang. And uh, it just... It just upsets me so much. Then the border crisis issue. We know what's going on with that. The Biden administration put in place now regulations to attempt to reduce the surge of immigrants illegally crossing the border. Not time, but you know what? Because it's election time, that's why. They're doing this by now restricting the ability for the people to apply for asylum. They don't know what the hell they're doing. And that bill that they talk about, that Trump stopped and all that. It was full of, of a lot of fat, a lot of garbage, and it wasn't going to correct the border. So let's stop saying Trump voted down the bill. Let's get a real bill in there and do what we got to do. And as far as the 20 million calculated illegals that are in our country, they're not all criminals, but a lot of them are people that have come to this country to cause discourse in America. And now we're talking about what they bring in. You've got you got young girls being raped by these gangs. You've got trafficking, sex trafficking, fentanyl, everything in the world coming through that board. And now all of a sudden, Kamala Harris, uh, she's getting tough now. Where were you for the last three and a half years, Kamala? You didn't even go down there. Now you want to be the president? I tell you what, people, if you like what we got right now, vote for Kamala Harris and you'll get more of this, but it'll only get worse. That's why we got to vote her out and vote that other idiot there in Minneapolis. All of a sudden now, he, they've just, I think it's a Minneapolis, Minnesota. I think the city council of morons there just passed the bill. Every hour you're going to hear, ay, 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 ay. they could be chanting. I was in Saudi Arabia 2,000 times. You get that in Saudi Arabia. Now you're going to be getting it in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh, okay. I don't want to go there. I don't want to listen to it, okay? They want to chant. Let them go to their mosque. God bless them. I love everybody's religion, but I don't want to deal with it, okay? Now, okay, now, all I know is that the Democrats' immigration policy, you know, 
it's so unbelievable how they keep knocking Trump for knocking this bill. The bill wasn't right. And that's it. We got to put a comprehensive bill together and also identify who the hell 20 million people are in our country. And it's crazy. And you know what? The, the border losses. Now we have all these migrants. Who's taking the toll? The little towns, the schools, you got 5,000 kids in a school, all of a sudden you got 1,000 migrants that don't speak English. Is that fair for the children in there? Then you have health care. You also have, you have health care. You have jobs. You have all these things, the economic issues. Now we're going to give them health care. And also, Kamala wants to give them houses. Give $50,000 for a house. What about the American people, Kamala? You want to give $50,000 to illegal immigrants to buy houses and all these deals? I, I just, I can't believe how upside down this country is. I'm 73 years old. I've never seen it worse than this. What's up is down and what's down is up. And that's it. Current events in New York City, all right, as of today, we talked about this stupid UN crap. That's finished with that. Now, all I know is, you know, I'm sorry for getting so animated, but I'm just really, really upset. You know, the GOP House bill was to focus on aims to help law enforcement. But the only problem was with all these bills, if we don't get this bail reform thing taken off the taken off the table and start penalizing criminals. What do you do with a criminal? 53 times you're arrested. You keep telling them, oh, you're out. You're a bad boy. No, the only way that we could turn this country around because this surge is going across and it's only going to get worse. Again, we got to revoke all these bail reform crap. And if we have to build more jails, let's build the damn jails. Let's put the criminals behind bars and not let them out after 50 felonies. Uh, and you know, poor ice in New York state, New York state, New York city. If you get a guy that's raped 16 girls, whatever, they're not allowed to turn it over to ice. They have to not let ICE know about what's going on. Is this right? You tell me if this is right. Uh, you know, now all of a sudden in New York City, we have a new one. They, they, the PBA fought these body cams. But now if, they shuts, if the cop shuts the body cam off during the incidents, they're going, to be, they're going to be charged with certain things. And you have to keep your body cam on, even when a person's asking for directions. In other words... You're a police officer, you're a cop, but you're a little boy scout. You don't have a mind. You always looked upon like you're doing something wrong. When I was a cop, when I was a detective, there was respect there. And a cop was respectful. When I got pulled over, when I was a cop and a detective, I respect it. And I say, excuse me, officer, I'm sorry. That's the problem. Now they spit in their face. They smack them around. And now these Venezuelan little scumbags love to assault cops. And these poor cops are out there. Then the demonstrations. The demonstrations of these pro-Palestinian in all our educational facilities on the street. They think they have the right to smack the cop, hit him in the head. When, when you hit a cop, you should get hit back. And I tell you what. When I was out there, now I never killed nobody. I arrested over 1,500 felons. I had the opportunity. A guy shot at me five times. He threw the gun down. Said, oh, you got me. I got stabbed. I got a fractured skull. I could have killed 15 people when I was a cop. I killed none. You know why? I was able to get them in a headlock, which you can't use now, but I don't know how you take someone down. This is the problem. The cops don't want to get involved because they don't want to lose their job, their pension, and their houses. That's the problem. Yeah, I got to talk about one of my one of my guys that I was very fond of, and his name is Sal Bartonelli. He's a young man who was a police officer. I was able to help him get into the detective division. And he uh, became a detective in the bu detective bureau, and he arrested his first murder suspect. Guy pushed a woman in front of a train. He did a great job, Sal. And I even got a great compliment from the chief of detectives that he's doing a great job. And I was very, very, he's still the only problem, Sal. You you can't be like Bo Deedle. That's what you said to me. I want to be like you, Bo. I'm sorry, Sal. Being like Bo Deedle, 
Probably today, Bo Deed will be doing time in Attica because you know why? Because when you do your job, all they want to do is condemn the cop for doing his job. And that's it. So basically that's what that. And next thing is we got to, we got to remember one thing. I don't know if you guys remember, I had this gentleman on my show, excuse me, Colonel Scott, man, nobody's coming to save you. Colonel Scott, man, is a former Green Beret. I had him on my, one of my podcasts. This is the one, if you remember, he was over there in Afghanistan with all the uh, interpreters, all the people that were helping our troops not getting blown up over there. And then we abruptly with this moron Biden and Kamala, yes, you were the vice president, Kamala. All of a sudden, we decide to pull out there one minute, leaving all the equipment behind, leaving all the records of all the people who are people that were friendly to the United States of America, their names, their addresses, leaving them to the Taliban to rape and murder these people that were supporting our troops in Afghanistan. And we left them behind. So this book, I want to recommend it. He was involved with Operation Pineapple. Lieutenant Colonel Scott, man, he tells it like it is. And ladies and gentlemen, please tell your friends about Bo Deedle's One Tough Podcast. We'll be back next week. We may have a guest. We may not have a guest because this is my only platform that I could say what you feel. And that's exactly what I do. And this is the only place where they can't throw me off. This is Bo Deals, One Tough Podcast. Let people know the truth can be said. Just listen to my podcast. Till next week, God bless you and your families. And I'm going to say it. God bless America, man. We got to take America back. And please, you don't like Trump? You don't like his personality? Hold your nose, but vote for Donald Trump. And this J.D. Vance, I like him a lot. Till next week. Thank you.